Hello guys, this is Code and Code and this is ninth lecture of this segmentary series and we have been studying Merge Sort Tree. So now this is the second lecture I guess of Merge Sort Tree in which we will be uh, studying the implementation and also the time complexity of Merge Sort Tree and we will see also how the queries are answered using Merge Sort Tree. So let's begin. So uh, in the previous lecture we have seen what kind of problems are there which cannot be solved using uh, segmentary. So one of the problem was this. Given an array of size n and there are q queries of the form l, r and k. Uh, so you have to tell how many elements are there in range l to r such that they are strictly smaller than k. Now for example this is the array. So the answer of 1 to 5 which means from first 5 elements how many elements are there which are strictly smaller than 4 so the answer is 2 because 1 and 3 are smaller than 4 so the answer is 2 similarly for last 4 elements how many elements are there which are strictly smaller than 4 so there are 3 elements 1 2 and 3 so the answer is 3 so you are given a range also an integer k you have to print the number of integer in that range which are strictly smaller than k so this is the problem and we have seen that uh, I, uh, using segmentary we cannot solve this problem but using uh, merge sort tree of course we can solve this problem so let's see what is merge sort tree so I have I think uh, in the previous lecture as well I have told you that at each node of the segmentary we don't only store the result of that range but the whole uh, sub array we store in that node of the segmentary so if this is your input array 1 4 3 5 6 4 3 2 then uh, the the last node which represents the range 1 1 would contain the element at index 1 in the in the original input array uh, this represents 2 2 which means the sub array which containing only one element which is element at index 2 similarly uh, this would store uh, this would store element at index 3 4 5 6 7 8 this node represent in the segmentary represent the range 1 2 1 2 means a sub array from 1 to 2 so this would contain both elements uh, basically all elements in the sub array 1 to 2 similarly uh, that is true for every single node in the segmentary you see this represents i guess uh, 5 to 8 so this contains all of the element from sub array 5 to 8 but in sorted order now storing uh, the storing the sub array in sorted order helps us solve the problem that we are discussing how we'll see and we'll study in a moment so you see so at each index of the segmentary instead of storing the result only we will store the whole sub array this is the basic idea of uh, Mersort tree so before studying I guess first let's let's look at how we'll be constructing the the tree data structure and then we'll see what is the time complexity of the uh, data structure so uh, let's see the implementation of uh, Mersort tree so here I have n, q, l, r and k and um, n is the number of elements in the array, q is the number of of course the queries l, r and k will be used to uh, represent a single query. Now reading n and q and after that uh, reading the input in the ar array. Here I have defined the ar array integer array uh, max n I have taken to be 1000. So now here uh, we are reading the input array. Uh, using one base index system this is for loop which runs from 1 to n now we are building the uh, 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 what do you call it merge sort tree so this is an important step and for now we'll see only the building part and later we'll see the query part in a moment so to build of course this works exactly uh, the same like the normal segmentary work so we have segment index segment start and segment end and of course if you haven't seen the lectures uh, of segmentary first i would advise you to watch those lectures because there are many things that i've explained and i cannot explain those things here so how build uh, build function works i have explained in detail in those lectures i cannot explain that here so we'll be directly using the knowledge that we, uh, the knowledge that we have already uh, studied so we have segment in uh, segment index segment start and segment end if segment start is equal to segment end that means you are at the leaf node you are here so basically it would contain 
the elements stored in at index ss or se because ss and se are same so in the segmentary uh, oh yeah the segmentary is actually uh, a an array of vector this time it is not an array of integer because at each node we are not saving a single integer but at each node of the segmentary we are storing a vector of integer so vi is actually vector of integer okay so pb is actually pushback uh, it is used to insert an array oh sorry it is used to insert an element and integer inside a vector uh, vector of int so basically i am inserting the the element at index ss and then returning since, since you are on the leaf node you would insert that element into the node of the segmentary and then you would return after that of course we have two recursive calls first we will calculate mid and then we'll build the left uh, left subtree and then we'll build the right subtree after that we'll merge them together uh, together to form the current subtree so you were here suppose so you made two recursive calls left and right so that your left subtree builds itself right subtree builds, builds itself and then your current subtree is actually the uh, the concatenation of these two sub arrays in the sorted order so this is one four this is three five if you uh, merge them together uh, then the sorted order would be one three four five right because at each step we must have at each node in the segmentary we must have the whole array sorted so the way you do it is the uh, if you rem if you know the merge sort algorithm uh, there is there are two steps in the merge sort algorithm first divide and then conquer uh, since that is a divide and conquer strategy of course it contains two steps so first what you do you divide divide basically you build the left sub left subtree and the right subtree after that you conquer basically use the use the sub sub parts that you have built to form the current node so you have built the left subtree you have built the right subtree all you have to do is take the vector on the left and the right just merge them together to form the sorted array and this is the same thing that we use in the merge set uh, merge step in the merge sort so if you remember or if you know the algorithm merge sort you know after sorting the left sub array and the right sub array you merge them together to form the uh, current sorted array and for that what you do uh, initialize i and j to be zero i will represent I will represent the uh, integer in the left subtree. J will represent the integer or basically the index of the right subtree, right? So how you uh, merge them? You must know it from merge sort. Uh, if you have not studied it, it's simple. You you start from uh, you take two pointers uh, mm. starting from here. Sorry, uh, starting from uh, I would represent the zeroth index from zero to, of course, the length of this vector and similarly j would start from 0 to this uh, the end of this vector so what you do you see which one is smaller in the current index current index current i represents 1 current j represents 3 smaller is 1 so here we would first insert 1 and then i would increment so i is now pointing to 4 now the smaller of 4 and 3 is 3 so you would insert 3 here and then j would increment so now i represents 4 j represents 5 so now the smaller of these two is 4 so you would in, you would add 4 here and increment i and so on so this is the uh, merge step in the merge sort and this is the same step that we will be using here if i is smaller than the uh, size of the vector of the left subtree and j is smaller than the size of the uh, vector of the right subtree that means they are pointing to the valid valid index and then we will see whether uh, whether uh, the element pointed by i is smaller if that's so that means we will insert in the current subtree the element pointed by i and increment i otherwise we will insert in the current segmentary uh, the element pointed by j and increment j after that what happens either the uh, either the elements in the from the left or the right subtree are remaining so these two while loops take care of that so this is how the build function works nothing special if you are on leaf of course insert the element into the segmentary and simply return otherwise make two recursive calls build the left subtree and the right subtree and after that simply merge them together to form the current so this is how <coughs> sorry uh, so this is how uh, building process works now the question is how the query works so oh 
before that let's see what is that uh, yeah we already know how to build the uh, mercer tree now let's see what is the space complexity of the mercer tree let me yeah so let's see the space complexity of the mercer tree now there are two ways i'll be explaining the space complexity of the mercer tree and both of the ways are easy enough to understand for someone with li little knowledge of mathematics so let's see how we'll use first method so first method is using the level in the seg uh, mercer tree now just tell me how many levels are there in the mercer tree so uh, this represents one level this represents another level this represents another level and this represents another level so in total one two three four four levels are there now this will be called the zeroth level why is zeroth level because we will be considering this as the root so this node is at distance zero from the root because this is the root so this is at distance zero now these two are at distance one from the root see one edge you have to follow one edge from root to reach these two right similarly all these uh, four uh, nodes are at distance two from the root so these four form a different uh, level similarly these eight form a different level so in total there are four levels four means log of n why log because each time you are dividing the whole range into two so you will keep dividing the range by two until it re reaches zero so in total there are log n number of steps it can be log of seal, uh, seal of log n but that doesn't matter that that won't change the uh, asymptotic notation of space complexity so the level is log n now the second question is how many elements are there at each level so see at level 1 sorry at level 0 there are 8 elements which is n n is 8 here so at level 0 we have n elements at level 1 we have n elements at level 2 we have n elements at level 3 we have n elements at each level we have exactly n elements so how many levels are there there are log n levels how many elements are there at each level there are n elements at each level so the so the total complexity total space complexity would be n log n so you see the space complexity of mercer tree is n log n while the space complexity of segment tree is roughly n so now let's see what is the other way to explain the space complexity for of course mercer tree now you know uh, suppose you are given 10 boxes and you are the guy who loves to make copies of each thing you have some magic gun or something like that so you can create copies of that i have given initially n boxes to you and then you created x copies of each box so how many total space you need for each box you have created x copies so in total you have x plus one boxes of each type there are n different types so in total the space complexity is x plus one times n right so let's calculate uh, initially i have given you these elements how many copies of each element do we have so for this element i have one copy stored here one copy stored here one copy stored here and one copy stored here so how many copies or one are there or basically this element there are log n copies one copy at each level similarly for this element one copy here one copy here one copy here and one copy here again for this element as well we have log n copies of this similarly for every single element we have log n copies because at each level we must have this element be stored in some place right so for each element we have log in copies of the elements and there are n elements so the overall complexity again is going to be n log n so i hope you have understood what is the space complexity of the uh, mercer tree if you have any doubt of course you can ask me in the article that i have created for this course the segmentary course ask there because there i can use latex or images to explain something if i have to so this was all for this lecture i i thought i will be explaining how to answer queries in this lecture but i think this is going to be a lengthy lecture so i'll be starting uh, stopping here so in the next lecture i'll be explaining you how to answer queries and what is the time complexity of answering the queries of the problem that we are discussing uh, we have seen in the starting of this uh, uh, starting of this lecture now one more thing i have to explain i'll be explaining how to answer queries theoretically and then we'll be uh, i'll be explaining you how this query function works so 
thank you guys for watching if you have any doubts or query of course you can ask on the article that i've created for this course and till the next video drops keep coding thank you